So, I want to describe the assignments. Okay. This assignment first I want you to generate a set of frequencies okay, in both log scale as well as in linear scale. The idea is this, if you have an electrical circuit and you measure impedance spectrum, then if the frequencies are in log scale, what would you see and if the frequencies are in linear scale, what will we see? Okay. So, for that I have split it into multiple questions. First part is to just generate a log spaced or geometric series frequencies from a minimum value of 1 hertz to maximum of 100 kilohertz. And typically we give 7 frequencies per decade. So, I have given that number at the minimum you need 5 frequencies per decade. If you can get 10 frequencies per decade it is well and good. In the same range if you use linear space what would we get? And then the second part of it we take a simple circuit called Randall circuit. Here we are just going to say that it has a resistance of 10 ohms in the R1 a capacitance of 1 microfarad, typically you would get 10 or 20 microfarad per centimeter square. So, if you have a very small electrode 1 microfarad is a reasonable number. And then a second resistance R2, I have given it as 10 ohms, it is not written clearly here, it has to be 10 ohms. Okay. And if we generate a spectrum using the set of frequencies that we got in the first part, what would we get? We want to plot that either in the complex plane plot or as Bode plot. In the Bode plot you can plot magnitude as a function of frequency and phi or the phase as a function of frequency that is one way. Sometimes you can also plot real part as a function of frequency and imaginary part as a function of frequency that has been shown in some publications. And whenever you use Bode plot you should plot the frequencies in log scale. Here at least for the case where the frequency generated are log spaced or geometric series, you have to plot them in log space and the linear frequencies you can plot in linear space or log space and see how that appears. Okay. The idea is for you to understand that if you use linear space then many of the features will not be clear, but I would like you to try that and get that information or see that when you span a frequency of 1 hertz to 100 kilohertz in logarithmic or geometric series, then you would have few frequencies in 1 to 10 hertz, few in 10 to 100, few in 100 to 1000, 1000 to 10,000, 10,000 to 100,000. Whereas, if you do in linear scale, most of them will appear only in the large frequencies and you will see very few in the below 100 hertz. And here the example is from 1 hertz to 100 kilohertz, many times you will have to take data from 1 millihertz or sometimes 100 microhertz to few kilohertz. So, after plotting this I also want you to see what happens if you change the resistance R1 from 10 ohms to 5 ohms or 20 ohms. What happens if you change the capacitance value C2 of 1 microfarad, we can make it half microfarad, 5 microfarad and then plot them again in the Bode plot, in the complex plane plot. So, is there a difference between the one that is plotted now versus the one which was plotted with the original set of values which is 10 ohm and 1 microfarad. So, if I put both of them in the same plot, will I be able to tell the difference? Okay. What happens when you change the R2? The idea is this, if you know that whenever the resistance R2 is changed, in Bode plot it will appear like this, in complex plane plot it will appear like this. Then when you actually do experiment you may do it in one solution, the same electrode you may change the solution composition, you might add a chemical or you may change the electrode surface and then redo the experiment. And when you compare if you see certain change in the result, you should be able to think and say this most likely means that this resistance has changed or this capacitance has changed. It will help you get an understanding of the physical phenomena if you have this knowledge. So, basically from the plots can we get an idea of what has changed in the system. Okay. So, to get that I would like you to try this part. 
So, I will quickly go over what the problems are and what I expected to see, okay. And some of the mistakes that I observed in the answers, um, what you should do to correct them. So, the first set of assignment problems are I think 3 or 4 problems. I would ask you to generate set of frequencies in log scale, linear scale, certain number of points and then use that frequency set to generate a spectrum, plot it in different formats, change the value of R1, R2, which is R solution, R polarization and double air capacitance and tell what you see, interpretations. So, when you plot it, you should plot, you can use lines, I do not mind, but if you do not use points, many times you will not see what is happening. So, if in body plot, if there are many points here and two points here, line will not tell you anything. You will not be able to tell that there are more points in one region and there are very few points in other region. If you put points, you would be able to see. Finally, how you present when you realize what is happening, finally how you present that is different. Meaning, if you are looking at data, you should know where the data lies how they are paced and then if you want to emphasize certain points, you will present it first time it is better to put data points and lines, markers and lines. And if you look at complex plane plot, what is commonly called as Nyquist plot, if you change the R1, this entire circle will shift to the right in the complex plane plot. In the body plot, you will have pair of responses, right, real and imaginary or phase and magnitude and they will move. In the phase, you may not see much of a change in the magnitude you will see that it shifted. If R2 is changing instead of in R1 case it is going to shift like this, but semicircle will not change. If R2 is changing, let us say it increases, but R1 remains the same, semicircle diameter will increase. Third, if you take a spectrum and change the CDL, actually the points here will move, but the circle diameter and if you just draw it as a line, that circle diameter will not change, circle location, center will not change. If you have taken data only up to this, if you have taken in a limited range, it may look like it is moving to the bottom, imaginary is decreasing, some of you have written like that, but that is not correct. Actually, if you watch very carefully, the point location at a given frequency will change. So, you will see that in some cases, the maximum will occur at some frequency. If you change the CDL, that frequency will change. That means, the point would move to the left or to the right or you can say to the bottom on either side, does not matter, but all of this will trace the same semicircle, it will be moving in that semicircle. What happens is, let us say there are 100 points here. If you change the CDL, some of them will get squeezed in one side, but entire curve if you just look at it without looking specifically at the points, but just overall curve, it will not change. And when you are comparing two or three cases, when you compare the spectrum, because spectra you would usually just look at the shape, look at the polarization resistance, solution resistance and you may not quickly observe this. Whereas, if you go to body plot, it will change. The location of the peak will change. Here, if you overlay two plots, you will think they are more or less identical. If I draw for a given R solution, given R1, given R2, if we change the value of CDL a little and plot one as a continuous line, another as marker, you will think both are same. Unless you are very careful in noting which frequency point lies where. If you do the same thing in Bode plot, face for example, one of them will be marker, one of them will be continuous line, you will know there is a difference. So, if there is a change in CDL and other parameters do not change, it is easy to see that in body plot. If there is a change in R1, R2, it is easy to see that in complex plane plot. That is what I would expect you to tell. So, it is not just, okay, you can do this, you can get this, go step by step, show me the plot and then I would like you to actually think about the meaning of those results. I can show you those values here and I can show you right in the presentation that if you change CDL, this is how it will come. One second you would see, but if you do it, you would really see what will happen when you get two sets of data, 
if you plot them together you say you run it at one condition you get a data like this you run it at another condition you get a data like this with an experimental error they look the same you may or may not realize right away that whereas if you run it in one condition it looks like this another condition it looks like this you can say yes this is because there is change in r2 